Welcome back to the 99, where we are focused on brewing a better competitive commander. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and thank you for joining me on week two of Corset 2021 spoiler season. This is, of course, an up-to-date overview of all of the latest releases from Corset 2021 as pertains to competitive commander. That's right, you're getting the perspective of a competitive player. So if you play a different format and or casually, this might not be the video for you. However, if you stumbled here, you might as well watch it. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two. That'd be great. Um, there's really not... The last set of spoilers was a little weak. This week's a little bit better. I, I honestly have to say, there's a handful more cards to talk about here. And in case you're wondering what I'm looking at, uh, I'm peering over at my laptop. And I've been keeping up to date with all of the spoilers via Scryfall. I'll go ahead and leave a link to the Scryfall homepage where you can follow along with all the recent updates as well. Now, as we mentioned last week, there was a rules change to Companion that really neutered Zerda in our Marath Will of the Wild list that was featured here. Now, guys, please, I heard your cries. A lot of you reached out to me stating, was there a way to fix this? It's a slower list now. I would recommend we just switch back to regular Marath. And I, I do have a resolution. As a matter of fact, a new card came out from the set for Marath that's perfect for the list. I'm very excited to go back to my roots, playing just regular old Marath with 100 cards in the list instead of 101. However, before we jump into this video any further, I do want to mention our partner TCG Player. Guys, if you're looking to pre-order any of these Corset 2021 cards, the best place to do so, I'm being honest with you, is TCG Player. Of course, I use some other sites every now and then, right? Maybe you'll find a few old border foils at a better price or a few promo cards, but by and by, TCG Player, online marketplace, best deals year round, kickbacks year round, hold tight for those. But guys, if you want to help out the channel indirectly, that's the best way to do so. Hook yourself up, hook us up, and you'll be doing us a big favor in, in that way. So thank you. Also, if you want to support us directly, you can do so via Anchor and or Patreon. Our Patreon members know this. There is a special community for you over on the Discord, as well as pick up games every now and then. I'm trying to do them more regularly, but if you are a Patreon member, I like to play games with our Patreon members. So there's that incentive too. It's not on the Patreon. That's just something that we've been doing and I'd like to make it more official moving forward. But guys, you all know this. Up until we hit 99, I'll be thanking each one of you individually, so stay tuned for that at the end of this video. Now, the first creature I'm going to mention is in white, and we're going to be going through this in Wooburg order. I do want to mention right off the bat, there are no colorless and or land cards we'll be talking about today, but it is impressive that we got at least a handful of cards to talk about in every color and one multicolored card. But the first card we'll be mentioning not Basri the Planeswalker, but his Lieutenant. Basri's Lieutenant, three generic, one white, creature human knight, three four body. This is a pretty cool combo card. It, it took me a look over. I had to read it over twice to, to catch the wording here, but there is something here. Vigilance, protection for multicolored. When Basri's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Let's just say you're in Selesnia and you threw it on a dork. Finehorn Elves. You threw it on Finehorn Elves. Whenever Basri's Lieutenant or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, create a 2-2 white knight creature token with Vigilance. It's pretty solid. It's actually a creature generator if a creature has a plus one plus one counter on it. Mind you, not non-token creature, creature. So here's where the combo comes into play. Now, is this something you're gonna really play for? I don't think necessarily. He's very easy to put on the field because it's three generic, but it is an A plus B plus C combo. You have Cathar's Crusade. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Again, creature, not non-token. This is three generic, double white. We of course also have things like Metallic Mimic, two generic for an artifact creature shapeshifter to one body as she enters, or or it rather, enters the battlefield to choose a creature type. Metallic Mimic is the chosen type in addition to its other types, and each other creature you control, just creature of the chosen type, enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter. You can see where we're going here. You would name Knight in this instance. And lastly, you can have something like Renata, right? We're in Selesnia. Renata, call to the hunt, two generic, double green, legendary enchantment creature, demigod. Uh, she's star, three defense. Her power is equal to your devotion to green. 
irrelevant. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter. So, at this point, we've got two parts of our engine set up. We just need one more element. What is that? Well, pick your flavor at this point. Anything that says sacrifice creature. Blasting station. That's easy. <laughs> Blasting station. It's on the screen now. Let's see if I can do this from memory. It's three generic for a spell. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may untap Blasting Station. You can tap Blasting Station to sacrifice a creature and deal one damage to any target. I think that was pretty darn close. Again, you could do anything you... I, oh, those abilities were reverse. Whatever. You could do any sack outlet with this and have a win. So, like, if your commander is an outlet, you could just have a infinite mana gain from this package. So Ashnod's Altar, Phyrexian Altar instead. Again, pick your flavor. There are combos to be had with Basri's Lieutenant. Is it something you're gonna go for? Uh, maybe not, but because it's a combo card, I figured I should mention that potential to you. Some food for thought, moving forward, potentially you could use Basri's Lieutenant. Now the next card I wanna talk about, <laughs> it's interesting because uh, over on the Discord, we were fighting over whether this was good or not. I think ultimately we landed on it being good, especially in Mono White. Because the next best thing to this in Mono White is Winds of Abaddon, which I often use. Angelic Ascension. Generic and one white for an instant speed spell at Uncommon. You're getting a handful of copies. Exile target creature Planeswalker. Its controller creates a 4-4 angel creature token with flying. Now... I mean, I think outside of our format, this would probably just be like an aggro piece, right? So you could just make angels out of your own things. Or if it comes to you losing the game, like Lab Jace is about to do the thing, exile the Lab Jace, the Lab Man. It doesn't matter what that target is. If it's a game winning component to your, uh, your opponent's board, then you want to get rid of it. Angelic Ascension, really solid at getting rid of it. And Planeswalker is becoming more and more relevant these days. I mean, that new Teferi that's coming out in Corset 2021, uh, the Master of Time, whatever his name is in this one, it's <laughs> Master of Time, literally. Yeah, that's gonna be a nuisance. I don't wanna deal with that every single turn. Uh, might as well just get rid of it with Angelic Ascension. I can deal with a 4-4 Angel, and honestly, I, unless the player is being spiteful, and you're in a deck, unless the player's being spiteful, one, and two, and you're not in a list that's using black, because that's the color that cares about life as a resource, the 4-4 four, four angel's probably not gonna be flying at you anyways, in commander. It's probably gonna go towards the guy who's threatening an ad nauseum, who's threatening a necropotence. It's, it's good, it's win-win all around. I, there's going to be a few chance scenarios where giving someone a 4-4 Angel is going to be bad for you. But for the most part, it's really solid removal in Mono White. I think in Multicolored List, there will there is better, right? Swords of, Swords of Plowshare, Path to Exile, those are going to be your staples. I think Path to Exile... I, I feel like Ramp is, is worse than this. Like, I don't want to give someone a land to use to accelerate their game plan, to make their turn four, their turn six, depending on what their board state is. I'd rather give them an angel. So Angelic Ascension, pretty darn good. Last one I'm gonna read off only because it is one half of the Heliod Ballista component. So it's another combo piece, three pieces. I'm not gonna say what they are. <laughs> I'm probably gonna say what they are anyways. Light of Promise. Two generic, one white for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, walking ballista. Enchanted creature has, whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. And walking ballista, if we all remember, you can remove 1-1 one, one counters to ping things if you just give them lifelink. Somehow your deck has a lifelink component. Light of promise, walking ballista. A, B, C, shoot the board. Simple. It's it's pretty good. It's interesting to see the Heliod Sun Crowned, I believe is the most recent one. Heliod Sun Crowned effect on an aura so soon. But I like it. I did we just run out of ideas? I don't know. That was that was weird. I it's fine though. I'll take it. 
So that is it for white. A couple of combo cards, one solid value piece out of there. And I, I really like Angelic Ascension. I'm probably going to pick up a copy or two. But we're moving on to blue now. You know, I don't really give a shit about blue. But uh, something the boys have been talking about, folks have been talking about, is this card the best? Is the art the worst? I'm not going to agree to any of that. I think the art is really goofy though, and I like it. Miscast, one blue, one one teardrop, instant teardrop, counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays three. We've seen these counter taxes before. This is not a new thing for blue. It's just another blue counter spell in blue's arsenal. I think mono blue is probably going to use this. I th I don't think this takes the place of any staple blue cards. I mean, you're probably gonna run Spell Snare over this. You're probably gonna run a lot of those staple blue cards over this. It's a counter spell, guys. If you didn't hear about it, there it is. Uh, perhaps your list wants it more than one of your other stock counter spells. It's not gonna replace your Force of Will, your Mana Drain, uh, or a lot of your one CMC counter spells. But it's a goodie. It's a goodie. Have fun with that. The only other blue card I want to mention is a combo card. Only because I, I don't, there's a few blue cards that combo with this girl, but this one's really interesting. I like how it does it. It's not a good combo, okay? Let me just put it out there. Talarian Kraken. What is, what, what combo is Pat talking about? Wait for it. For generic double tier. <laughs> for the cutest Kraken, creature Kraken, 4-6 body. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. When, uh, when you do, you may tap or untap target creature. The creature we want to untap, oh, I'll tell you, is Savala. Not Heart of the Wilds, but Savala Explorer Returned. So if you don't know who Savala Explorer Returned is, it is the less popular Savala. Because winning with her is actually difficult. It's, it's weird how Mono Green has more potential than Green with White. I'm just saying. And it's strictly because Savala Heart of the Wilds lets you draw off of her. But so does this. Savala Explorer Return, one generic Selesnya, as I mentioned, green white, legendary creature, elf scout, two four body. It's it's she's actually really solid, just as a creature on the ground. Parlay. Old effect, parlay, everyone draws a card after set effect goes into place. The Savala's effect is a mana ability. Each player reveals the top card of his or her library. For each non-land card revealed this way, add green to your mana pool and you gain one life. Then each player draws the revealed card. So it's a mana ability. It doesn't use the stack. Add mana. So long as you make one mana, you trigger Talarian Kraken. You may untap her, right? At that point, people have a chance to interact. And they're drawing cards. So they're going to they're gonna gain interactions. But you, you have green and white in this list too, so hopefully you put down a silence. The concept here would be to draw your opponents out, to make them draw so they can't draw anymore, and then they lose the game. It's an effective strategy in Savala herself. I can imagine adding more colors would make this better. You could add utilities that whenever they go to your graveyard from anywhere, shuffle your, you know, they shuffle back into your library, so you always have something to draw. Also, you could use something like Green Sun Zenith to just shuffle it back into your library, always have something to draw. There are ways to get this to go off and not lose to drawing out and still have your opponents lose to drawing out. Talarian Kraken. No one's going to do that, but another combo for you. Enjoy it. Moving on to black. Mm. Yes, I'm drinking espresso at midnight Sunday morning. That's how these go. The, the easily the best common from this set, arguably the best, Village Rites. One black, instant speed, as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. What the hell are you talking about, Pat? This sounds like a stupid card. <laughs> you draw two cards. Draw two cards, period, after doing that. Make the block. Make the game, the game-changing block. Sacrifice a creature, draw two cards, find your combo. It's not always gonna go that way. <laughs> However, if you're you're in you're in black here, so you've got a lot of creatures to sacrifice to some effect, I'm positive. 
You're going to be drawing two cards when you do that now. I kind of wish that this was a red card one because red needs a lot of help. <laughs> Black doesn't really need help with putting cards in their hand. Red does. Also, it is literally the mirror image of another red card called Infernal Plunge, which is you sacrifice a creature and you add three red mana to your mana pool. It's, it's red's answer to Dark Ritual. I was hoping that Village Rites could be their answer to just having draw. Decent draw. But Village Rites, so good. Um, y use it? Use it. What, what, is, what colors are you in? Use it. If you're in mono black or a multicolored, I'd say up to like, this is just effective draw. You're always gonna want this. It's not gonna take the place of, what is that thing where you sacrifice creature and diabolic intent? Yeah, you're gonna wanna save your creature to, to do that instead, tutor, but for the most part, drawing two cards, pretty damn good. Now the next black card we wanna talk about, so damn good. Another one CMCer, Thieves Guild Enforcer. She's not gonna see use in many lists, but she's so good. I'm only mentioning her because she's so good. Human Rogue, Creature, 1-1, one, one, Flash. When Thieves Guild Enforcer or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. Yes, there's a combo there. I'm sure there's some convoluted way to just recast a rogue to make your opponents mill, right? So that's the combo. But she has flash, so any top deck tutor. The more we see Sylvan Tutor and that card, more common every day. Worldly Tutor, always common. Imperial Seal, expensive, common. If your pals proxy it, seeing it all the time. Any top deck tutor, get rid of it. Use this, get rid of it. It's one CMC, it's just one black to play. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, Thieves Guild Assassin gets plus two, plus one, and has death touch. What? <laughs> what? Did you, did we even need? I'm not complaining though. It's damn good. Uh, pro and probably my favorite rare from the set. Not for Commander necessarily, I just think the build of this card is brilliant. I think it's one of the more interesting cards to date. That is, uh, Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Some of the cards, like Light of Promise, a little stale. We just saw that. That though, damn good. At one, hmm. We're moving on to red. There's only one card to truly mention in red. However, I'm gonna bring up another one because it's a combo card. So everyone's talked about this. I feel like every child, every man, woman, and child that saw this immediately thought, Kiki Jiki. Conspicuous Snoop. For double red, creature goblin, rogue. There's your rogue. There's your rogue. So with the Snoop, you can play with the top card of your library revealed. You have to. Did I say it's a 2-2? Two -two? It's a 2-2. Two -two. You may cast goblin spells from the top of your library. This is going nowhere. None of this sounds interesting. I'm not in goblin tribal pack. As long as the top card of your library is a goblin card, conspicuous Snoop has all activated abilities of that card. Now Snoop himself is not hasty, so he is summoning sick. And it's very obvious when you, when you set up the combo line to have a breaking point by way of removal, or just, I don't know, curse totem, Linvala. Someone sees the Snoop, thinks it's funny. Cursed Totem. However, the combo, in case you haven't heard of this already, Kiki Jiki, you put that on top. So you would want to put it on top, let's just say you're in mono red, and there's a, a, a black card that does it too, I forget the name of it, but there's a top deck tutor in black, Bogart, something Bogart, Goblin Bogart, you're in mono red. Goblin Recruiter. So you look through your list, find, I'll read it off for you. Comes into play, search your library for any number of goblins you choose and then reveal those cards and shuffle your library and put them on top of your library in any order. You really only wanna grab Kiki Jiki, but if you wanna save everyone else the trouble of finding the other cards in this combo, just find them and I'll be listing them off in a second and stack them neatly on top of your library. So the idea here being Snoop, cast Goblin Recruiter. This is your turn three, maybe your turn two should you have had the fast mana. Goblin Recruiter puts Kiki Jiki on top of your library. Conspicuous Snoop, everyone sees it because it's revealed, but more importantly, the boy sees it. Poof, tap, make a copy of target non-legendary creature, Snoop. 
making a copy of Snoop. We're gonna make a billion Snoops now. All the Snoops. The last Snoop of the billion Snoops is gonna copy Goblin Recruiter. We're now gonna grab one of the other two cards, Mono Red. We can use, at this point, Mog Fanatic. Mog Fanatic says all of your goblins, or in, the, in this instance, all of your goblins, but Mog Fanatic sacrifices itself to deal one damage. All the Snoops sacrifice themselves to deal one damage. If you're feeling really cheeky, like no one had interaction for you while you set this up, then you can use Torch Courier, even funnier. It's a goblin, sacrifice Torch Courier. Another target creature gains haste until the end of turn. Swing with the Snoop, it's brilliant. Um, I like that conspicuous Snoop as a card. Do I think it is an immediately playable strategy? I would not play Mono Red. Uh, I wouldn't play Patchlick Mon for this, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go for this. Oh, hey, there's another Wincon. There you go, Patchlick Mons. And then you just have to have a way to sacrifice it. You use the Skirk Prospector to make infinite red mana Goblin Recruit to get Pashlik Mon on top. Bam. Okay. There you go. Uh, I would recommend using something like Samut. Samut, Voice of Descent. Have you heard of her? She's Naya. Something that enables haste on a body, but is in a relevant color pie to allow for the proper tutors to make your dream come true because we're, we're really asking for a lot here. We do want the, again, the top deck tutors. Our Thieves Guild Enforcer is gonna crush the Snoop, but if she isn't out there, now's the time to play her. Uh, you can use your Worldly Tutor, you can use your Sylvan Tutor, you can use your, well, Samut. We can use our well, anything within that line. And then of course you can use your Imperial Recruiter to grab your Goblin Recruiter to put the Goblins on top. There are so many, tutor to hand effects that just give you the creature as well it's very good i think that snoop can see play but it is a difficult setup right so there's that uh some people are asking if i would play snoop and wart you could you could i'm not playing any of the top deck tutors though and snoop again is the major issue here is that snoop doesn't have haste so you do need a moment to give it haste. Either get past the summoning sickness or, again, we're Naya, if we use Samut. You have Rhythm of the Wild or just Samut. It's it's okay. I would love to know how you guys are brewing for Conspicuous Snoop. I haven't tried anything yet. I know the combo lines. There's plenty, all right? There's, the one I list off was one of a hundred. I'm sure that you could arrange for this guy. Again, with Skirk Prospector, the guy that lets you sacrifice goblins to make red mana. There's more there. So, why not? Do something with Snoop. The only other card I want to talk about in red, it's another stuffy doll. Um, Brash Taunter. So, it's four, it's so expensive. Four generic, one red, and stuffy doll is five. Creature Goblin, oh my god, you can copy the ability of this guy. One, one indestructible when brash taunter is dealt damage it deals that much damage to target opponent all right so if you know the stuffy doll combo and i'll mention the card in a second this is the guy for you stuffy doll is better though let's just end this conversation there but two red one oh, sorry two generic one red tap brash taunter fights another target creature so you can fight something it does damage to itself and then it pings someone and guess what if you have guilty conscience, the price is gonna just soar after this video. One printing, Scourge. Guilty conscience is one white, enchanted creature. Whenever enchanted creature deals damage, guilty conscience deals that much damage to enchanted creature. You get the idea. You would fight something, deal damage, 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 deal damage. Deal damage. Stuffy Doll deals damage to itself, though. It's on the screen. It's on the screen. It's just better. <laughs> I would rather just do that for less. I think it just, like, it, you just have to tap it. You just tap it and do the thing. I'll put it on the screen. I don't remember. Brash Taunter, though. It's another Stuffy Doll. That should have been the flavor text. Green, okay, so green didn't really, mm, we're nearing the end of the list here. I'm only mentioning this one. It's another elemental bond effect, except uh, better. 
it's just it's better in every way um garuk's uprising two generic one green enchantment when garuk's uprising enters the battlefield if you control a creature with four power or greater draw a card creatures you control have trample why the hell not whenever a creature with a power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control draw a card draw a card just draw a card damage draw a card draw i'm the draw a card guy i like drawing cards so to be more precise this is more like kavu lair right and that's a older card from invasion kavu lair reads two generic one green whenever a creature of power four greater enters the battlefield its controller draws a card so garuk's uprising is a single-sided kavu lair with two more abilities same mana cost uncommon yeah damn that's a pushed that is a very good an elemental bond just for a reference same thing only you and the creature needs to have three power or more so there's a few of these that exist in the world of green uh big creatures entering not even big like a three three is not big a four four is not that big big ish creatures entering and you drawing cards this is the best one though the static trample can very much come into effect as well as the fact that you just it replaces itself if you're playing in a list with big creatures like savala heart of the wilds am i saying this is for savala heart of the wilds well i'll be damned if there haven't been moments where i felt like i needed more draw it's crazy to say it is really crazy to say great henge is better but this is very good and to round off the list of green card scoos it's a reprint but have you seen the art I think this is this has to be a box topper masterpiece something special sam rowan you elevated the scoos i'm not gonna lie the original classic love it this oh my gosh i'm elated i love I, I i really love this one i'm only mentioning it because the art is so good do i need scavenger ooze no but i'll be buying the scavenging ooze it's it looks good uh, anyways i'm gonna leave that on the screen for a little bit while I'll let you uh let you rest on that let it ruminate while i pull up this next card our last card and the reason i brought up marath at the beginning of this video this is hardened scales on a body and who could ask for anything more conclave mentor selesnia so green white for a creature centaur cleric couldn't really tell he was a centaur at first I see a bushy tail now add on common two two body so good if one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature you control that many plus one plus one counters plus one are put on that creature instead hardened scales hardened scales is one green that same effect enchantment cool when conclave mentor dies you gain life equal to its power who gives a damn i mean i don't know you got the heliod thing in there you want to you need to gain life really quick for some reason whatever it's there you can do that now i'm trying to think if there's a logical way to do that you would cast walking ballista for like with one one counter on it and then kill this to gain life and put another one to help start the thing it doesn't matter conclave mentor though in Marath. If you don't know the combo yet, this is something I brought up with Commander 2020 when Cryptic Trilobite was announced. Marath, alongside Cryptic Trilobite and Hardened Scales, or in this instance, Conclave Mentor, allows you to make infinite generic mana to activate abilities, as well as put infinite plus one plus one counters on Marath and infinitely kill the board. And how do you do that? You'll simply remove a plus one plus one counter from Marath to add it to Cryptic Trilobite, giving Cryptic Trilobite two of those counters or one plus one. You'll remove both of them, why not? And with that mana, you'll go ahead and add a plus one plus one counter to Marath. But in this instance, plus one plus one, bringing Marath back up to three counters. Do it again, you're back up to, back up, you're just above and blazing towards infinite at four, and you have two generic left. You keep looping this by removing counters, placing them on Trilobite, removing counters, placing them on Marath. You get the picture. Ultimately, you're able to knock out the board with generic mana off of Cryptic Trilobite. It's really good because Creatures are more immediately tutorable in Naya. If you've ever played Naya, all of the tutors are for creatures. 
Um, there's idyllic tutor enlightened tutor a handful of tutors that work for enchantments sterling grove another one that works for enchantments however creature tutors are the ones we have in abundance and the ones we want to leverage and conclave mentor is an excellent green sun zenith target this is such a value piece in marath hardened scales that is we're using both still this isn't replacing hardened scales in marath it's just very good in marath so we want both because we combo with it there are a bunch of combos in Marath. As a matter of fact, a, a Cathar's Crusade is something that people use. Screw that. You don't need that. You want Conclave Mentor. And if you want any of the cards that I mentioned today, the best place to do so is TCG Player. Stop being a fool. Conclave Mentor? You think you're going to find a good deal anywhere else? No. TCG Player. I bet you 15 cents. 10 cents. This guy's not going to be worth anything after the set releases because there's going to be so many on the market and your Marath list will be thanking you as well as I because anytime you buy through the link in the description, you're hooking up the channel. So help yourself out, help us out, and thank you very much for being so sweet. Also, if you want to help support us directly, you can do so via Anchor and or Patreon. And to close this video out, and you guys know it, I'm going to be thanking our Patreon members specifically. But... For all of those who aren't Patreon members, what are you most excited about? Week two. What's getting your what's getting your juices flowing so far as the new releases thus far? Did I miss anything? Was there another combo card I missed or just another card in general that is a value piece in Commander, competitive specifically, that you feel should have been talked about today? We'll talk about it in the comments. Okay, I don't I'm not all knowing. I'm not I'm not perfect. I'm not gonna hit every single one. But Adam. Adrian and Allie, they would know all of them. They spotted all of the combo cards. They know all the value pieces. They should really be leading this show. But instead, they're, they're patrons, and I appreciate you for that. Jarn, Brendan, Bruno, thank you so much for your patronage. Burden, Carl, Carlos, conspicuous snoops. Who is the snoop, by the way? Is it the, it says Goblin, but it could be that chick off to the left. I'm not so sure. Christopher, Clyde, Corwin, thank you so much. Bosri's lieutenants, you're Bosri's colonels. <laughs> Sorry. Craig, Dante, Dave, thank you so much for your patronage. Frank, frankly, Gregory, you guys, some of the best. I feel like I saw you in Village Rights imagery, though. What were you guys doing there? Gullius, Harry, Jake, thank you so much. You're, you're members of the... Goblin Recruiter line of play. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that you would make for the best conspicuous noob lines. Harry, Jake, Jared. Did I just, did I repeat names? Jared, Jason, Javier, Mace, and Jordan. Thank you so much for your patronage. There's, oh my gosh, there's so, there's so many of you, but we've got double Josh now. There's a battle between Josh's and Matthew's at this point. Josh, M, Josh, B, Kev, Kevin, thank you so much. And now double Kevin's, Kevin B, Kevin N, thank you guys so much. Leon, Leonardo, Luke, Mason, Matthew B, Matthew K. What team are you for? Thank you guys so much for your patronage. You guys are the best. Nathan, Nick, Oliver, Paul, Rennell, Running Red, Sam, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you for the plus one combo. Shade. <laughs> You're joking me about this. Schmamby Tannenbaum. Thank you for your patronage. Sir Fluffykins, Shord, Submox1. I think that's how you pronounce that whole thing. Thank you for your patronage. You guys really light. You're the light of my life. You brighten my world. Light of my life's a little. That's, that's pretty hardcore. Sorry if I creeped anyone out. The Holy Knight, Tim Trent Chaofan, the one and only. Thank you so much, all of you guys, for your patronage. You are the best fans of the show. You help make all of this happen, and I really do appreciate you for all of that. I cannot wait to get in a few more games with you guys. Again, Patreon members, feel free to just shout at me with the, with the at button, with the at symbol on Patreon if you ever wanted to just do a pickup game. I'm usually free in the evenings if I'm not shooting a late night video, but I'm usually free to play some pickup games. And I'm usually uh, there testing out new lists, 
with our Patreon members. So if you want to see some of the lists before I ever discuss them on the show, that's a fun way to do so. I'll likely be testing out the current Marath build I'm working on over on Patreon. So if you want to join in on the fun, you can do so. And of course, you can just join in on games with the rest of our Discordians. Again, I rarely plug it, but our Discord, Twitter, Instagram, follow there if you want to have more conversations with us. But Discord, generally the best place, and Patreon, the page itself, as well as our Brew Babies Discord channel is the best spot to chat with at least me and the rest of the crew. But guys, again, I'm Patrick Marlette. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Stay tuned for week three. Is that our final week? I forget. It's 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 nearing the end, though. We're nearing the end of these, these spoils, and then we're going to just do a full-on review. But until then, happy brewing, babies.